Hey y'all, and welcome to another example problem. So in this one, we're looking at one-dimensional motion. So we're looking at objects moving, accelerating in a single direction, and we're going to look at a situation where we have um, a constant acceleration, even though the problem doesn't explicitly state that. So here, what we have is we have uh, some information about a subway. We're told that it has some maximum possible acceleration of 1.64 meters per second squared. It could be less. We're also told that the distance between stations is 820 six meters and we're asked to figure out first of all in part a what is the maximum speed the subway can attain then in b how much time does it take to travel between stations and then in part c if it stops for 24 seconds at each station what is the maximum average velocity from one startup to the next startup so pause the video and give this one a go on your own and then we will go ahead and work through it together all right, so hopefully you've given this one a try. Let's go ahead and roll up our sleeves and dive in together. So what's going on? Well, we are looking at, again, this train that's trying to go as quickly as possible between stations. Now, I went ahead and labeled point zero as where we start right here, and then point two as at the far end of the station. I put a point one halfway. Can anyone guess why I did that? Well, the reason I did that was because if it's going to accelerate, it's going to be able to accelerate with a positive acceleration from point zero to point one, but then it's going to need the same exact distance to decelerate to get back to a velocity of zero at point two when it stops. So if I call this point zero where we start, its initial velocity would be zero meters per second. The velocity at point one here is actually what we're looking for in part A and the velocity over here at point two is zero meters per second again when we stop. If we look at our position, our initial position, we can go ahead and call zero meters since that's where we're starting. Our first position would be exactly halfway, so that would be 413 meters, half of our total distance. And then the final position here would be the 826 meters. All right, so if we call our initial time, which we almost always do, zero seconds, then T1 is actually what we're looking for. Nope, we're not looking for. But T1 is the time it takes to get halfway, and then T2 is actually what we're looking for in part B, and that's just going to be two times T1. By symmetry, it takes the same amount of time to speed up and slow down if you have the same acceleration. All right? So, yeah, this right here, again, is what we're looking for in part B. This is what we're looking for in part A. And then we'll tackle part C once we get there. But that's really the average velocity over the whole trip, assuming you have to stop. Okay, so, right, what we got going here is actually really good. We know that the acceleration here in the first leg of the journey, we can call that A1, is going to be a positive 1.64 meters per second squared if we're looking for as quick as possible. And then the acceleration in the second phase has the same magnitude, but opposite in direction. So negative 1.64 meters per second squared. And if we look there, yeah, I think we've written out all of our variables. So in part A, when we're asked to figure out how fast it gets going, the maximum speed it reaches, which should occur exactly halfway in between its trip, because that's right before it starts slowing down, to figure that out, we want to find the final velocity if you look, we know initial velocity, we know position, and we know acceleration. So if you look over your equations of motion, the one that you're going to want to pick out is the one that does not require time, and that is the v final squared, which I'm calling v1, equals v initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by your displacement, which would be x1 minus x initial in this case. All right. Now notice, again, normally you see this as V final and V initial. I'm calling it V1 and V initial because our equations of motion are true between any two points as long as you have a constant acceleration. So we can do it from point 0 to point 1 or from point 1 to point 2 or from point 0 to point 2. Any way you want to do it, it could work as long as you have constant acceleration. So in this case, our equations of motion don't work from 0 to 2 since the acceleration changes in between. Anyway, so if we want to solve this, this guy's zero. That's easy. This guy's zero. That's nice. And so our v1 is just going to be equal to the square root of two times our acceleration multiplied by the distance traveled. So v1 is just going to be the square root of two times 1.64 meters per second squared 
multiplied by 413 meters, and we plug and chug, and we find that V1 should come out to be equal to 36.8 meters per second. Boom, box worthy. Now since it's a square root, you could get a plus or a minus, but we know it's the positive value that we're looking for. Cool, all right, that was nice. Now for part B, we wanna figure out the total time. Now, since we have that changing acceleration, I'm just gonna go ahead and find T1 and then double it to find T2. So to find time now, we wanna use a different equation of motion. I like to always use the variables given us in the problem statement, so I'm gonna choose the equation of motion that does not require the, us needing the final velocity. So I'm gonna use the equation of motion that says x final equals x initial plus v initial in the x times time plus one half our acceleration times time squared. Now this is nice because this guy's zero and this guy's zero, right? And so our position, which we know, is just gonna be equal to one half our acceleration times time squared. Do algebra to solve for time, so I multiply both sides by two and divide by a, and that gives me t squared equals two x over my acceleration, square root both sides, and I get that my time is equal to the square root of two times, and this is T1, let's make sure we don't lose track of that. T1 is equal to two times my 413, uh, 413 meters divided by my 1.64 meters per second squared. And so if you do the math, this time should come out to 22.44 seconds. Let's move down to give ourselves just a little bit more space. And it's T2 that we want, which is just going to be double T1. And so T2 is going to be equal to 44.9 seconds when you round to three sig figs. Also box worthy for sure. All right, now lastly, we want to look at part C. Now part C is asking us for the average velocity over the whole time from start to finish. So just to recall, average velocity is equal to your change in position, so that'd be x final, in this case x2 minus x initial, over your change in time, which would be t2 minus t initial, but really, is that the total time? Uh, no, let's erase that. I'm gonna erase that, and instead I'm just gonna write t total. Because what is t total? Well, our total time is actually gonna be equal to t2, which is for the time that you're traveling plus the time that you spend stopped. SP does not spell stopped, so let's fix that, sorry. Time stopped. So our total time will actually be our 44.9 seconds plus our stoppage time, which let's double check, yep, 24 seconds, okay, plus the 24 seconds we spend stopped, so our total time is actually going to be equal to 68.9 seconds. So now, if we wanted to find our average velocity over the whole time, this is the maximum because this is when we're going as fast as possible from one stop to the next, that's going to be the distance covered, which is our entire 826 meters, divided by this total time of 68.9 seconds, and so that average speed Let's clean up what we're writing here. The average speed is going to be equal to basically 12 meters per second, which again is Foxworthy. So I hope that uh, gives you a good example of how to tackle some of these one-dimensional motion problems. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, have yourselves a Foxworthy day.